see thousands more buyers in the USA on Amazon that just email the factory and just place an order and they don't even check to see if the factory exists. Did you know that? And guess what? There's a lot of factories that don't exist. And there's scammers in China, in other developing countries that will take the money. It happens. Because I've had clients come to me and say, oh, this factory didn't exist and we sent them the money. Yeah, it happens. Wow. Okay, so please don't send money if you have not physically visited a factory. So here is the blue factory and it's been authenticated by this uh, third party and also we can contact supplier and there's some, what's important with the business registration is that they say that they make something. Do they say that they produce something? Yes, it says here that they're in the business of electronic production. In order to use that word production, they have to be verified as a manufacturer in under Chinese law. Okay, and then there's the red one. Does the red one say that they make something? Yes, it does along here. Production of multimedia play, you can see that. All right, so again, they pass that law test. They pass the website test. So here is our first one, the blue one. And here's another website. Here's the red one. Which one do you like so far? Hands up for the blue. Hands up for the red. Why do you like the red? We haven't visited the factory yet. Why do you like the red? Because? Uh, more pictures. Oh, oh, okay, all right. You like... The red, more pictures. I don't know, the blue had pictures too. All right, okay. All right, there's the blue, there's the red, okay? And so what do you do after that? Well, we've got to go visit the factory. So let's go visit the factory, shall we? Let's have a look. Okay, got the blue and we've got the red. I didn't like the blue factory because I had to go upstairs first time, didn't like that. All right, so we're going to two factories and when we go into the red one, I notice there's a lot of administration staff here and I'm realizing, wow, this factory has a lot of extra costs because of all this staff. Um, one way to help save factory costs is to fire staff. You fire half of those staff. There's too many of them. This one had fewer staff. And this was admin, R&D, they're doing a bit of R&D here, and there's a bit of admin at the front, but basically that's it all. But this one is a much larger operation. Look at all the sales area, okay? And half of them are talking, they're not working, you know? All right. So this is what you see when you first go into a factory. Normally you see the admin. So now we need to go into the operation room, and here, Wow, when I saw this, I'm thinking, I'm freaking out. We don't want smartphones, but they're making smartphones for a European client. And basically, when we went through the, oh, what, what do we have here? Very standard operating procedure. So here we have prevention, prevention costs, right? We have clear prevention costs here. Uh, they're making the TV, this one they're making a TV Dougal, that is a thing that you plug into your smartphone, then you operate your TV, you transfer your phones, your phone signal into the television, okay? And here they're making a smartphone on the day we were there. They were not making the, those picture frames on the first assembly line we saw. I think in the latest assembly line we saw that. But here are the two operations. Put your hand up, who likes the blue so far? Anyone like, who likes the red? Somebody like, the, why do you like the red? Huh? Which one looks cleaner? The red. Okay, all right. Well, they're making smartphones. Very slow here. Okay, this is good. All right. And here, this is uh, very good for the air purification for the workers. It's very important when they're doing soldering, they need to have this, so that's good. But, I don't see many documentation of what the workers have to do. By the way, this is a, this is a, 
a semi-automated screwdriver. They don't have to put the screws in, it automatically fills up. Ah, so now we so finally see the picture frame. Here we have the, I showed you this last week, but this is, remember, it's smartphone. I haven't even seen the picture frames here. But here they are putting together some, the electronic circuits. So that's another assembly line that they're putting together. I still cannot see the documentation of what they have to do. Here, they are packing these picture frames for a Japanese customer, for a Japanese client. That's Japanese, right? Am I right? It's Japanese, just trust me, all right? All right? Japanese. And when I, first, when I heard that, what do, remember what I said this morning, I said, wow, they got a Japanese customer? That factory must be good, okay? You've got to look for signs, okay? Look for signs. Use your brains in terms of and then here we have the, that was the rework at the back and there was no documentation of the rework. Here we have the actual picture frames being made here, but we didn't see them being made on the day that we went. But when I see the smartphones, I thought, wow, this is just as good, if not better than HTC's operations in Taiwan. And I've been to HTC four times now, four times, and just as good. So they are the two, uh, comparisons so far. So I have to give a report back to the clients in the USA, which factories they should they buy from. Picture frame, like they're not gonna buy a smartphone, okay? And I did see they were making picture frames in this one. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, all factories have, remember quality, remember we have prevention, we have appraisal, we have internal failure and external failure, and normally, Internal failure is a result of appraisal. Are you with me? Because you check, 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 check. Oh, this one fails, okay, internal failure. Are you with me? All right, so let's have a look at the appraisal and internal failure setting, okay? You haven't seen this before. All right, all electronics factories have to have some, like, this is called a burn-in room. What is a burn-in room? That means, 100% of all electric products that are made have to be charged up and then they have to be discharged and then charged up again. A lot of factories, they don't discharge and charge again, they just boom straight into the package and send them off. But this is the way of documenting to make sure that they do charge up properly. And so there's all the quality QC on the, this is what you call Appraisal. This is appraisal. So this is the QC of all the charging that's been going on. There's the QC of the charging that's going on here. I went into another factory and the QC is actually done by a computer. It's all automated. You can automate this process. But again, here we have, this is all prevention. So they're both blue and the red. You would say, okay, we both give them full marks for that area. Okay, good, all right, what else? Then we learn something else? Yes, we need to go to the management of quality, okay? I like this factory immediately because I didn't have to bend, over, bend down to put this on, all right? Just put your foot in and then done, right? Here, they didn't even ask me to put that on. Then I went into a room here and then they, you know, take all the dust off. You saw that last week. So dust-free zone, you go into the other area, great. Here, there's no dust-free zone. Here. <laughs> All right, enough. All right, here there's no dust-free zone. And look, here's the lady operating this million-dollar machine with one hand, and what is she doing with the other hand? What is, what is this person doing with her other hand? Look, it's okay for students to play with a smartphone in the lecture, but this is your product. This is your product that you're buying, all right? All right? So it may be your product that you buy one day, okay? So be careful, all right? And when I, you don't see that until you actually go and see for your very own eyes what the factory is like. Ah, okay. Um, and so again, I went, they asked me to go into this clean room here. And this clean room was cleaner than the clean room I came from. And when I went into that, this clean room, wow, the breath, the air was so pure. It was like going to hospital when you take the anaesthetic with the oxygen. Oh, it was beautiful, loved it. And so this was an amazing clean room inside the clean room. Here, they had windows open and the air was coming in and dust coming in and, oh, amazing. 
So these are the two things that we saw in the two. But we weren't allowed to go into this area here without permission. So they had, they had uh, control over who was allowed to go into these areas. Uh, this is where, because of smartphone manufacturing, this is where they were actually putting the LCM module on the LCD and the glass, which is a critical part of smartphone manufacturing process. Again, this, uh, that's an SMT machine, surface mounted technology. These are all resistors and all of that, and the machine just puts them onto the circuit board very, very fast. And so there it is there doing it there. Okay, enough of that. So you got the green, you got the blue factory, you got the red factory. Let's go to the last part. Okay, so now we need to go, when you do the factory audit, we, now we need to go to the showroom. That is, we're gonna look at all the, what do we call it? Well, all the products. And then I'm looking, at, that's the product that my client wanted to buy, this one here, okay? With the pencil coming out the back. But this one here, I'm holding up, and it's got the pencil that's sticking out the back, but then there was another one that they had that is even more fancy than that. They actually, instead of putting the circuitry behind the PCB board, or behind the LCM module, they had it as a stand on its own, and it was in about one quarter of the space. So if you have smaller space, guess what happens? It gets hotter, it gets hotter. And so I actually, this is it here, all right? They made it very small, and that was very hot. And so I told them they should do a redesign here because you could, that could result in external failure. How? Because a client puts it on a marble mantelpiece, it won't cause fire. If they put it on something flammable, maybe it's sitting there for several hours, it may catch fire. House fire, lawyers love that sort of thing. So I told them they should redesign. I told my client, do not buy that product there. Buy the, buy the less modern one with the with the pencil that sticks out the back and holds it up. Like this one here, buy that one instead. So that was my advice to the client. But you don't see that until you actually go and actually check out all of their products yourself. Okay, so now we want to, we want to do an order. The client wants to buy 5,000 picture frames. And so now we, we're ready for auction. Are you ready? Have you got your money ready? So, how much do we bid? Let's do US dollars, keep it safe, all right? US dollars, how much do we have for this picture frame? Let's, let we start blue or red? Let's start with the blue, let's start with the, hmm, let me think. Let's start with the blue factory. Can I have $15? Do we have 15, 15 FOB, 15, 15, do we have 15 ho? 15, we've got 15 over here. Do we have 16? Anyone for $16, FOB? How, for the blue factory, how much would you buy, pay for, for that photo frame? If you want, have a guess. Let's participate here. We have $16, 16. Do we have 16? Do I have a 16 here? 16, we have se se 16 here. We're going for 17. Anyone for 17, 17, 17, 17? And for 17 at the back, 17, we are 17, okay, we've got 18 over here, 17, 18 over here. Anyone for 18, 18? 20. 20. Yeah. 20, 20 or 28? 20, 20, okay. So when we talked to the blue factory, they went up to, they said it will be $20, minimum order is 1,000. It's 1,000 minimum order, 20 FOB. FOB means free on board, that means they will ship it to a port in Hong Kong or Shenzhen or Shanghai and then you pay for shipping from the, to Amazon, to Lazada. Like you can do that yourself. You can go to these factories, get these picture frames, pay 20 US dollars for 1,000 and put it on Lazada. Okay, you know Lazada? All right, you can do, you should try that. It's good, you know, it'd be good learning experience. Costs money, but good learning. Just do the USBs from that other, factory I told you about, much cheaper. Okay, so let's start with the red. What are we gonna do? What are we, let's start. Is red a better factory? Who, which one's a better factory? Okay, you like the red. Okay, so is it gonna be cheaper than 20 or less than 20? It's gonna be more, okay. So can we start with 20? Anyone for 20? 20, we've got 20 here. Anyone for 21? 21, 21, 21. Okay, we've got 21 here. Anyone for 22? 22. 22, 22, 22, 22 here, anyone for 23, anyone 23 at the back, great, you got it. Okay, so when we went to the red factory, 
they said, okay, 23, we'll not go below $23. The blue factory said, we'll give it to you for 20. Okay, so my client is buying, did I say 1,000? No, he's actually buying 5,000. He's buying 5,000. That's a 15,000 US dollar difference between two factories. $15,000 more. So, hands up, hands up if the, my client should buy from the red factory. Hands up if my client should buy from the blue factory. Anyone? Uh, now you're thinking differently here, okay? $15,000 difference. It's not just a $200 difference. Uh, you know, everything has a cost. Everything has a price. You want high quality? You've got to pay more. Ah, right, this is real business here, all right? So let's have a look at what I recommended to a client. I said, look, the red factory is $3 per unit more. I recommend that. It is really, really good. They're making smartphones. I cannot fault that factory. Ah, so this is what happened. The client ordered, let's have a look. Remember, this is real. I, I don't like to give you textbook stuff. I'm gonna give you stuff I experienced myself. Okay, the first order, 2,000 units. This is what actually happened. All right, 23 US dollars, 30% deposit, 40% before shipment. And then the client sold them all on Amazon. They were selling the hotcakes. So the client came back to me and said, I want to order 2,000 more. This was less than six weeks later. And then, then the red factory, guess what? Oh, we want 26 US dollars now. <gasps> but, 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 but you said 23. I said, yeah, but that was the last time. But now we want 26. So what are we going what okay, what are you gonna do now? So my client said, oh, all right, okay. Because I got demand, I cannot afford to change factories now. Okay, here's 26. Okay. And so then the client sells all those 2,000, then actually goes for a new model, and then the client says, then the uh, red factory says, no, I want $28 more. This is hostage taking. This is a factory. It sucked the buyer in with a low price and then suddenly it just puts the price up afterwards. Wow. This happens. This is business. Okay, now, now you know what happened. Let's just rewind. Let's just rewind here. Okay, let's just rewind. Okay, and I'll ask you a question again. Hands up if you want to buy from the blue factory. Who wants to buy from the blue factory? Who would buy from the red factory still? No hands. Why? Well, you change your mind? What's going on? Why? Why did you change your mind? Because they keep putting the price up? Well, what did you expect? You think they're going to put the price down? Prices only go up over time. Maybe, but here is the different argument. You've got to think about this. Is, now we're getting into negotiation a bit out of chapter 19, but I just want you to think about this, is the blue factory is not really in a stronger position as the red factory to put the price up. The blue factory needs my client's business more than the red factory. The red factory, what? They've got... They're making smartphones. They're going to make 10 times more money out of selling smartphones than picture frames. The Blue Factory may be one of their flagship products. You see? And so, so what I said to the client, the client came back to me and told me, oh, this is what happened. What do I do? You know? And I felt, I felt bad because I, I recommend buying from the Red Factory. I told the client what you told me. So... I was doing the right thing, right? Because that's what you would have done. And then the client comes back to me five months later, look, look what they did to me. Look what they did. This is, so he said, what do I do now? All right, so what I said is go back to the blue factory, go back, negotiate down. Maybe the blue factory is at $21 or 22, let's negotiate. But we know their quality prevention and quality appraisal procedures are not as good. Ah, you all saw that, fine. 
So why don't we hire a third party quality inspector to come in and inspect more of those units? Because the red factory, there was no, he didn't hire a third party inspector. I said, look, you're going to save four to five US dollars per unit. If you order 2,000 units, that's 10,000 US dollars. It only costs, it costs less than 500 US dollars a day to have an inspector at the factory. So you could, you could spend about three days inspecting all of your goods, $1,500, you're $10,000 better off, and you're ahead. And that was my advice to the client. Okay, so what, do you, what should you learn from this? Okay, number one, quality is important. You see the difference, you see for yourself. Okay, but what you learn today is to look for prevention activities are much stronger signs and signals of quality than appraisal activities. Anyone can do appraisal, but very few factories care enough to do the right prevention, that is, design in and have the right standard operating procedures and have the right training and everything like that. Ah, you know, these are the, prevention is what is sustainable. Appraisal is just within whatever period you're doing it. Appraisal could be here today, it can be gone tomorrow. It only takes one of the inspectors to get sick one day when your, when your order is going through the production line and you don't know. But prevention is there all the time. The SOPs, the design, the things that are in the system, built into the system. Ah, that's a big thing you need to take away from today. Chapter 19, prevention is different from appraisal costs. Ah, the other big thing to take away, as I mentioned earlier, is reporting, okay? You, you, you wanna put things into a financial report from non-financial into financial because that's how you justify getting money from C managers in the organization. Okay, so that's chapter 19. I believe we've had a good time today. Thank you so much for allowing me to change the Thursday lecture to this morning. The actual code for Thursday won't be available until Thursday, but I did take your name list down this morning for that. The code for today is QH54A, and I will see you next Monday, and I'll be around for consultation on Wednesday, maybe a little bit earlier. If you want to come a little bit earlier, that is fine, okay? Two o'clock, three o'clock, uh, that's possible, okay? So any questions, please don't hesitate. If you want to talk to me now, that's fine. If you've got questions about the assignment, I'll be around tomorrow if you want to come and see me as a group, okay? Happy to help you. All right, thank you very much. Thank you.